Okay, I will go over the exam three review in this video. So and, uh, it will look like uh, you're the one we put on the web assignment basically. Again, I will go over each problem or the main problems actually, the one that you need to know. And the exam three, there are 20 questions. So we we'll go over one by one, okay? All right, let's go. Uh, the first one is telling you to compute integral of x, 3 half plus 4x plus 8. So for this one, you have to know uh, what we call the power rule. Yeah, you definitely need to know the power rule for this one. And actually, most of this test is based on the power rule. So integral of xn is xn plus 1 over n plus 1. Uh, so now, if we want x3 half, it will be x3 half plus 1 over 3 half plus 1. Uh, then you do that, 3 half plus 1 over 3 half plus 1, which is 5 half over 5 a half, x squared over 2. Integral of x, x is x to the power 1. And this one is 8x, okay? So 4 over 2 is just 2. And this one, 1 over 5 over 2, you just flip it over. Then you will get this. Okay, this one is just the power of the first question. Let's take a look to the second question. Since second question is... Okay, we know that the derivative of sine is cosine. So integral of this one will be cosine. So this one do it like 3 integral of cosine plus 7 integral of sine x of x. You can, it's linear. Integral of sine is just cosine x. Integral of cosine is minus sine x. Okay, remember integral of cosine x of dx. No, sorry. I derived this one actually. This is positive. Integral of cosine is sine. Integral of sine is negative cosine. Yeah, you have to be careful here with the sine. If we derive, actually, sine x prime is cosine x. And if we derive minus cosine x prime is minus, minus sine x, which is sine x. Okay, so you have to be very careful. So this one becomes 3, if I look to it, 3 times sine plus 7 times minus cosine x, which is 3 sine, which is actually 3 sine x. Okay. Plus a constant. Okay. That's the second problem. Let's go now to the third problem. Third problem, it looks like Riemann sums. Okay. They are giving you this division. And they want the upper upper uh, surface area and lower surface area. But here you have to be careful the, of the function is decreasing. 
So now how can you compute surface area of each box? Remember the width here, you have to figure out what is the width. The width is one over five. See one over five, one over five, one over five, one over five, one over five. Okay, there are five over fives, which is gives you one basically. So now how do you compute? And the height is just the function, it depends like the height of this one, of this one will be one, one over five times seven. Why we get seven? Because if you plug in one into the function here, seven over one will give me seven. Now, what is this one? This one is one plus one over five. So if, what is one plus one over five? One plus one over five is six over five. You can see it here, six over five, okay. So now how do you compute? Uh, this one is one over five times seven. This one is one over five times the, the function f of six over five. What is f of six over five? Is seven over six over five. It will be seven over six over five times one, one fifth. Now, what is this one? This one is one plus two over five, which is what? Which is seven over five. Each time you add two. So, seven over five. So you do, you plug it into the function, it will be, so I have actually one, two, three, four, five. So I will go all the way to, this one so actually will take so like this one I will take this one for this one I will take this one left so in this case it will be left for upper always you take left you do seven this one is seven over one for this one it will be seven over six over five for this one it will be seven over seven over five seven over eight over five seven over nine over five and you stop here because you need the up and you multiply by the width okay then if you compute you will get seven you just simplify you will get five point two one mine. Now, if you want lower, lower, lower is clearly a little bit different. So, the width is one over five. The height is this one. You take a right, a right and point. See, you will take this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. You take a right and a point. Then you keep adding them up. You will go all the way to this one. Okay, all the way to two basically. Seven over two is the last one. Then you will get this one. Yeah, you just uh, the main idea here is you have to know how to plug in the value into the function. Be very careful. The height is the function. Okay. Yeah, for number four, you have to use the graphing calculator to just look it up, how to compute definite integral using graphing calculator. We did not ask you here to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So it's just using the calculator. Okay, next question number five is about the average of a function. The show you what is average. So the average, if you take function uh, of certain surface area, so surface area, this surface area is the integral, okay? It will be one over B minus A, integral from A to B of E of X to X. Now, what is the function we have? Nine minus X squared. And A is negative, B is three. 
So you will get, so the average will be this. Okay. But here, you can, you can still use your, your calculator. You don't have to, to go all the way. But since we did not ask you to show your work, actually, if you, but if you want to do uh, integration, you, you have to find the integral of minus nine x. You do the power rule x squared is x cubed over three. Then you, how do you compute this one? You take, this is the entire derivative. So now you plug in three into this, minus you plug in negative three into this. Then you will get actually nine times three, 27 minus 27 over which is nine. If you plug in negative three, you'll get minus 27 plus nine. If you, you compute this one, it will be six. Remember how to compute fundamental theorem of calculus is telling you f of b minus f of a. Okay. Now, let's compute this definite indefinite integral, but here to the power 6. So how can I do this one? Okay, let me do it for you here, number six. Okay, here I will use u substitution u is this one, okay? Okay, but remember the main, here we use substitution. method. It, what you have to remember that t over tx is u prime, really important. So now you have to solve for tx. So if you cross multiply t u is u prime tx, that means tx is t u over u prime. Remember this one. Okay, now what is u prime? u prime is 9. Okay, so now you get this one becomes integral of u to the power 6, because this is u times 9. And what is 9 times, what is tx? tx is tu over u prime. See? And what is u plus 9? And look, the magic happened. It will cancel 9. So this one becomes integral of u 6 tu. And what is, let me go back here, integral of u 6 to u is u 6 plus 1 over 6 plus 1, which is u 7 over 7, which is 3 plus 9x, 7 over 7. And you close the case. Okay, that's what, what will happen. You just have to use your substitution for this. Okay, let's move on. Number seven, as you can see, we will be 2 over theta squared cosine of 2 over theta. Okay, same. You just have to, if it looks uh, complicated, remember is your substitution. And uh, you can see that u will be this one, this u. Okay. And now if you want to compute this one, is like 2 over x, basically. Theta, you do 2 to x negative 1, okay. Now if you want to do compute 2 over x prime, is 2 x minus 1 prime. And this one is 2n, x, n minus 1, if you remember.
this is negative two, okay? Then you will get minus two over x squared. But now this one becomes u prime is minus two over theta squared. Okay, actually it's a little bit like this one becomes minus u prime. Okay, you get d theta. Now this one will be and d theta is d u over u prime. U prime is minus two over theta squared. Okay, and yeah, you can see that you can cancel out this one and this one, so you get. And what is integral of minus cosine u? This one will be sine u minus, which is minus sine two over theta. That's the final answer. Okay, anyway, I mentioned here you substitution. So number eight is a little bit tricky, but it's you substitution. So this one, see, you cannot really do your substitution here, but you substitution plus something x plus 6 okay this is what you have to do you do u is x plus 6 okay what is dx dx remember is d u or u prime and what is u prime u prime here is just one it will be T u become d because this is one. So t is just tx. Or tx is just t. You see here what you will get. But the problem you have to solve for x. Okay. So here, unfortunately, this one, if you do x root of u, t u. See, we we have we still have this x, we cannot cancel. So what do you do? You solve for x. Okay. So, and clearly, this is u minus 6. And then, now this becomes u minus 6. So now what you will get? You will get... Okay, and you know how to do this one. Using the power rule, then you... Okay, and what is this? This is u is u to one plus one half minus six u to one half. And this is three half. So I will get integral of three u three half. You just do n plus one, n plus one, okay, this one, then that's what you will get. You will get two fifths, two fifth, uh, this is two fifths u to five over two. So in other words, Okay, then this is 2 over 5, x plus 6, 5 half, minus 12. 12 over 3 is 4. Okay, that's what you will get. Now just remember the trick here is to solve 4x. Okay, that's what you need. Then you use the power rule to solve 4x. Okay, let's move on. Next, 
Yeah, this one it has nothing to do with univariance or the derivatives. You have to be to know the derivatives. So this is the product rule, if you remember. What is the product rule? If you have U V, you do U V prime is U prime V plus U V prime. Okay, you you flip that. So what do I have here? Eight X is U, and ln of eight X is V. So what will I get here? Prime is eight X prime. And what is 8x prime is 8. Now, what is a derivative of ln? You have here to be careful because, uh, okay, we know that ln of, ln of x is 1 over x, okay? But I don't have ln of 8, uh, x, I have ln of 8x. Let's say this one is ln of u. Okay, this one, how do you, do you solve this one? You have to really know what we call chain rule. Chain rule uh, for the power is u n prime is n u n minus 1 u prime. This is for power, but if you have a general function f of u, right? So what do I have? I have ln of 8x, okay? f is ln, and u is 8x, okay? So this is called the outer function, and this one is the inner. So what do I do? I need to multiply the inner by the outer. What is the outer? Is ln, it will be 1 over x, or 1 over u, which is 1 over 8x times 8, which is one just 1 over x. And by the way, by the way, ln of u, I want to give you this one. So remember this one, in ln of u is u prime over u. Yeah, please remember it for your exam. Probably it will be, let's say, ln of x prime is 8x prime over 8x. Just the derivative, which is 8 over 8x. Okay. Yeah, I may be wrong here. Actually, so we don't have the uh, sorry. Here actually we have eight x squared. It's actually okay. Yeah, okay. Let me just go back to if you have eight x squared is ln of eight x. Okay. This is u, and you want to take this one prime is u prime v plus u v prime. Okay. So what is u? u is 8x squared. So u prime is 8 times 2x, which is 16x. Uh, what is v? Okay, and what did we say? This is like a ln of some u. It will be 8 over x, which is 1 over x. Now you just replace it, okay? I'm not gonna do it, you just finish it up. Your prime is this. Actually, it's not too hard. U. And this one over this one is just x plus 8x. So the final answer seems to me is sine ln of 8x plus. Uh, 
Okay. All right. Anyway, remember your your product rule for derivatives. Yeah, review week actually. Okay, number ten. Number ten is uh, something called logarithmic diffusion, which is this one. Okay, we want to do use logarithmic differentiation to find the y over the x. So you have square root of x squared minus four over x squared plus four. Square root is this to the power one half. Okay, uh, this is how we do it. You just you have to align both sides. Okay, remember this is this is to one half, and actually let me do it here. There is one step. This you can do it like this. Okay. Now what we do, we take ln both sides. So ln y is ln of x squared minus 4 over x squared plus 4 to the power 1 half. And what happened, this 1 half goes here, the properties of logarithm 1 half. Now we use the quotient error. ln of a minus ln of b. Okay. Uh, that's it. And now you derive both sides. So what they have, ln of the function is this. But we know what is the derivative of ln of u. Look here, there is a, this is something that I is mentioned, ln of u. u here is, is y, u here is x minus 4, and u here is x4 plus 4. Now, when you derive ln of u, what did we say? Is u prime over u. Okay, yeah, you just take u prime over u. So this one will be y prime over y. u here is y, is 1 half. u prime here is 2x over u minus 4x cubed, okay, that's it, and now what do you do, how can you get y prime, so y prime, and here you, you, you multiply both sides by, by y, Actually, I'm sorry here again. This is x squared. This is 2x. I'm doing something not, as, not good, not good. Okay. Well, it make it much easier. So we can see we have 2x in both sides. So you, we can factor 2x. So we first, okay. This is what we will get. So factor 2x, it will be 2x over 2. One over x squared minus four, minus one over x squared plus four. Okay, that's why prime over one, okay. Two over two cancel out. Now, what, what is this? I have, you can have common denominator. OK, 
okay and if you do the math What is this? Four minus four, this becomes x squared minus six squared. It will be eight x x to the power four minus sixteen. See? Now what do you do? This y is the then you multiply by y. Both sides. They cancel out, so y prime is y times, and what is y? y is the original function we gave you, that's, that's the y, it will be just square root of x squared minus 4, Not too bad. So please remember you have to simplify. Like, see, I did a little mistake here, but if you do try to math to simplify as much as you can, because this is with a sign. Okay. Let's go now to number 11. Number 11 is, is this indefinite integral of this. Okay, you can see here very clearly that uh, it will involve logarithm. If you see fraction with integral, usually, usually it involves logarithm, but we can see that derivative of this is almost this one. So I would take this is my, you you have to use your substitution so tx co prime is minus 5x to the power 4 tx is t over u prime that means tx will be okay so now this one will be x4 over u times t u over And you can see that x4 goes by to it because they cancel out. So now this one becomes and this one I can take it out. And what is integral of 1 over u is just telling of u. Actually, it's absolute value because here not sure if it's positive this one then it will be minus one over five ln okay and i think we have it in your way of assigned solutions okay now let me just go over Number 12. Number 12, it involves trig function. I want to integrate secant of x over 5. So what you do, du here is x over 5. Okay. Okay, let me just do it here because... Okay, the u is 1 over 5, okay, then du, x over 5, tx, so u prime is 1 over 5, tx is t over u prime, so if you do the math, tx will be 5 du, okay. Then you come over here in a graph of secant of u. 
times 5 t u and this 5 you can take it out then you will get And what is integral of secant? That you have to know. You have to have your table. Integral of secant is uh, is ln of absolute value sin of u. Okay, times five. Okay, then you replace u by initial substitution. Then you will get 5 ln of Okay, so remember the integral of uh, Three functions, okay. All right, let's go now. Number thirteen, it is the inverse function 13, problem 13. Okay, let me give you the function is this. It's, the question is like this. They give you this function. F, this is F. The, and they give you a or actually this is the y value they want they take the inverse function the derivative of the inverse function if negative one prime of negative eight okay so this is the formula normally f negative of of x prime Okay, so what do I have here? I have e of x is x cubed minus one, and the value we are picking is negative eight. So, but you have to know which value give you negative eight. Usually, we give you some easy values. We can check that. f of negative 1 actually is negative 8. Okay, so f inverse of negative 8 will be negative 1. How we can check, you just plug in negative 1 here. So what will I get? I will get negative 1 minus 6 minus 1, which is negative 8. Okay, so what is f prime of x? plus six okay now what what do we have here i want if i follow this if this is negative eight okay this one will be what negative one so i will get one over if prime of negative one and what is if if prime of negative one you have to to go to the like to use three times which is nine so then it will be one over nine okay because the derivative of this one so normally, if you have 
if, if inverse of x prime it will be 1 over 3 f inverse of x squared plus 1 and this is negative 8 so this one will be negative 1 sorry plus 6 plus 6 if then it will be 9, 1 over 9. See, in other words, you have to apply the derivative to the inverse image, to do the one that gives you, to do x, this is negative 8 here, and, and x here. You have to look for which one gives you the y value, which is negative 1. Okay, then you do f prime, you plug in a prime of this one. Okay, number 14 now, I'm almost done. Again is the directive. Okay, this has to do with, uh, you have to remember, uh, to remember derivative of EX is just EX. Okay, derivative of XN prime is NXN minus 1. And here I have product, remember product E of X, G of X prime. That's it, if you know this, you're good. You are good to go see this one. And this one actually you can just do this. I would just do it this way. You can do x squared minus 2x plus 4 times ex. See, it's easier. So now this is u. This, uh, this is f, this is g, and you compute if prime is, uh, sorry, this is derivative of this one to x minus 2 times the x plus this one times derivative of ex. Okay, then you, you factor again. Then it will be x squared plus 2 dx. All right, so just here review the product rule. I cannot emphasize enough. Product will be the exam. Okay, now the question 15 is to find the tangent line. Wow, the whole line actually they are asked. So find the equation of tangent line. Remember the slope is just the derivative. Yeah, this is this is not that easy, this derivative. Okay. Tangent line, okay. What is the function u of x is? And the point we want tangent is 1, 0. Why 1, 0? Because ln of 1 is 0. Okay, so what is the slope here? Then I have to compute the derivative if prime of x. It will be e minus x prime ln of x to e minus x times ln of x prime. The product is okay. Now what is e minus x? This one is easy. This one is 1 over x. This one you have to be careful here. This one is chain rule. This one is like e u prime. This one is u prime times e. Yeah, we have to use chain rule. And u is negative x, then it will get negative 1 times Oh, 
okay that's what you will get and you can simplify if you want minus whatever that's the directive now i need to plug in one so remember the slope y slope you do a prime of one what is the prime of one is minus e minus one ln of one which is zero plus e minus one over one which is e minus one so the slope is one over e okay so now what is the equation uh, what do we have the slope point equation this is m x minus x1 y minus y1 is m x minus x1 so y what would they have at one zero that's x1 that y1 and m is e to negative one or one over e then i will get y minus zero equals one over e x which is y equals one over e x minus one over e okay just keep in mind that the derivative will be the slope and then you use the slope point equation okay i'm done with this one and actually to check that's exactly what they get and we've assigned c you compute the derivative you plug in one into the derivative that's the slope tangent line y minus y1 1 minus 0 equals slope x minus 1 case closed okay there it's very neat and short okay now let's go to number 16. Uh, number 16 has to do of logarithm of certain base okay let me remind you the base here is eight how how do you derive a line of certain base 13. remember the derivative of ln of x is one over x but what, what if we give you a line of eight this one will be is if you remember ln of x over ln of eight prime you, you change the base you go ln of l log base b of x is ln of x over ln of b okay so obviously if you derive this one you will derive this one and so derivative of this one is one over x okay so derivative of log base a to x will be in over uh, one over this one will be one over ln of a times x but what do we have here we don't have uh, log base a we have log base a of x squared minus 3x Now, what do we have here? This is use substitution. And this is f. This is like f of u. You remember chain rule? What is chain rule? So now if I want u, y prime is f of u prime. OK, it will be f prime of u times u prime. You always we always multiply by the derivative of u and which is 2x minus 3 and what is f prime if prime is derivative log base 8 it will be 1 over ln of 8 times x okay which is if i want to make it look good okay 
But let me give you this one that may to be useful for the exam. Log base d of u prime is u prime over u. You do derivative times ln of d. Okay. If you have log base a to x squared minus 3x and you want to compute the prime, this is you. You do 2x Okay, that's it for number 16. Let's go now to number 17. It's very similar. Number 17 looks like this. Integral of 4 to the power sine x times cosine x dx. You can see that the derivative of this is this. So this one should be u. We have to use u substitution. And this one will be to you. Okay. I will get here integral of 4 u. To you. So, but I really need to know now what is the integral of the exponential. So again, let's work on that. But remember, so why this one is du? Remember, dx is du over u prime. Okay, dx will be du over what is u prime? u prime is cosine x, okay? So if you plug in here, d over cosine x, they will cancel out. Okay, you will get cosine x d over d cosine x. Now, question. What is integral of in base to the power x dx? Okay. Uh, this one you can do it. I'm going to just give you the derivative. This one you can do ln of bx, which is exponential ln of b times x. Now, when you derive this one, gives you ln of b exponential ln of bx. And this one, what is it? This one is just b to the power x. Okay, so derivative of bx is ln of b bx. Let me probably do it. Anyway, the derivative of any base prime is ln of b times bx. Now, if you integrate, it will be okay. So integral. This one is just bx. So integral of dx dx will be this. That's what I want you to remember. Okay, now if you have 4 to the power x dx will be 1 over ln of 4 times 4 to the power x. But we don't have, we don't, we have actually integral of 4 to the power u. Okay, this one will be 1 over ln of 4 what to the power u and what is u u is just sine x it will be one over ln of four four to sine x okay yeah summarizing uh, you take your sine x, you will get integral for you. 
n integral of 4 u1 over ln of 4, 4 to the power u. Is actually same as this one, but divided by ln of 4. Okay, let me just go. Okay, this is a little bit different derivative of uh, the inverse function arc cosecant of negative t squared. Okay, let me remind you some derivatives. I think this table is useful. Because is this one actually that you need to use this one? So if uh, the last, there are a bunch of them actually. The derivative of sine, you remember, is cosine, but here you have to use chain root sine of u. We always multiply by u prime. So the one we need is r cosine, r cosecant of u. You multiply by u prime. So you will go. Remember, let me just remind you, uh, arc if I derive this one, I will get what? Minus 1 over If I have here x, okay, that's the derivative. Now, if you have u, minus u prime, because you multiply by u prime over f of u. Again, it's chain rule, but what do I have? If you see this thing, you have r cosecant of negative t squared. So u is negative t squared. It will be minus minus 2t. You will get this one. So if you plug in this one, you will get definitely. Uh, you can simplify this one. This is just a t over t squared. And t over t squared is 1 over t, it will be 2. Okay, that's what you will get. So, yeah, please remember this. I think I uploaded it with uh, the PowerPoint. Uh, there are a bunch of uh, derivatives that you have to know. Uh, arc sine, arc cosine, arc tan. Yeah, the, the main one, let me probably just review them a little bit. So, so you have arc, arc sine x. is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared, okay? This is a famous one. And so arc sine u, if you have u substitution, is u prime over. Okay, that's what your table shows you. If you can see arc sine of u, u prime over, okay? And the uh, arc tangent okay, so if you want arc tangent of u prime u squared, okay, you, you have to multiply by u prime. And you have arc secant, arc uh, arc secant of 
there is non negative so if you take our code 10 the only difference between arc 10 and arc 10 arc 10 has negative sign here and arc cosecant has negative sign so if you have uh, okay and arc cosecant Okay, now let me give you number nine, for instance. See this one, it reminds me of uh, arc. If you look to the table, uh, we have arc. You can, this, that's why I'm telling you this one is kind of famous. One minus u squared. So let me... give you another formula 1 minus 6 squared what did we say is arc sine of x okay but now if you change this one to some number it will be arc sine of x over square root of that number okay that's now if you have any graph like in number 19 what do you have you have this one see any graph of one over square root six minus six squared it will be arc sine of x over root of six six and uh, if you want to do the math why you are not asked to but you, you, you factor by six in the bottom here you will get one then you will get square root see we need a dx over yeah blah 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 yeah then you will at the end that's you can see here that root of six go outside but it will cancel out so but anyway this is another formula that you have to remember Okay, last problem, and I'm done. Uh, now is hyperbolic functions. Okay, what? Uh, again, let me remind you a little bit. Hyperbolic functions. So there is cosine hyperbolic of x, which is e x plus e minus x over two. Then you have sine hyperbolic and you can see that the derivative of e minus x prime is minus e minus x. Okay, so derivative now of sine. They they behave like trig functions. Derivative of sine is cosine. That's why we call them uh, this name, cosine and sine hyperbolic. Now, what do we have here? We have uh, we want to compute the derivative of sine hyperbolic of two x. This is again is f of u extremely extreme I, I cannot emphasize enough on this one this is just f of u prime this is f prime of u times u prime okay which is what is derivative of sine hyperbolic or sine hyperbolic of u 
find the prime. Exactly the same for uh, arcs, uh, the inverse of trig functions. Then it will be cosine hyperbolic of 2x times 2. And you can move 2 to the front. Okay, I think this is about it for this review. So, and uh, to summarize, you have to know uh, indefinite integrals. Definite integrals. Okay, what else? What Riemann sums. You be careful when the function is increasing and decreasing. The left and the right can change, okay? And you have to basically know the derivative of logs base b of x and, and the integrals also. Derivative of this one uh integral of px okay you have to know inverse strict functions and hyperbolic functions Okay, like the derivative and the integrals. Okay, yeah, that's it for this review. Hope, hope that this could help. Thank you.